What is going on, Edged Mindset here? We're taking a look at the Microtech MSI. Not a new knife, but I have a metric butt ton of MSIs right here in front of me. So I want to talk about them. I want to do a comparison. Here's what I want to cover, right? So here's, here's the gist of the video other than just hanging out with me and blabbing and talking on whatever happens to come up in my mind. I want to compare an older G10 version here to the newer or a newer polymer version. I'm not saying that the polymer version is a newer version of this. They've always been available. It's just these happen to be newer. This one's a little bit older and it's G10. I want to do some weight comparisons. There's also some interesting things I've found between these knives. There, <laughs> there's some differences on like the lock face and some other parts that uh, you wouldn't expect to see considering all these polymer ones here are all relatively, I mean, pretty close to the same production line. And yet there's quite a few differences between them um, as well as comparing this one here. So what, what is the MSI? MSI stands for, well, first of all, it's made by Microtech Knives right here in the United States. It stands for Microtech Standard Issue. Uh, they've always been a little interesting with their names, um, but you know, they're a super successful company. So can't criticize them, it works. Uh, Microtech standard issue. So the gist, as I understand it, is this was this is their budget knife, right? So this is kind of their baseline budget knife line. And in particular is the polymer handled ones because this is, as far as I know right now, the cheapest or least expensive knife you can get from Microtech. Uh, these retail for around $175. So sub $200 for a USA made knife with the same premium steel M390 MK that all their other knives have. So that's that's a big deal, right? A lot of the times uh, when knife companies do budget lines, part of that budgetism is uh, the steel. You know, use a lesser steel, uh, 154 CM or, you know, whatever, even lower steels than that to get that price down. Uh, but because Microtech makes so many knives, they're able to buy M390 MK from Bowler in such quantities that I guess it just made more sense to use the same steel that they do on all their knives. So really cool because the only thing that you're really kind of taking a hit on isn't really much, honestly. Um, isn't really much, especially if you get into the G10 version, which is more expensive than the polymer version, but not by a ton. Uh, really, this is the same materials, build quality, ram lock as the stitch manual, as the amphibian manual, um, and yet it is less expensive. And so clearly they've, they, you know, it's not just less expensive because they've cheaped out on things or materials. They really haven't. It's kind of more, I think it's more of a subsidized type thing, right? They wanted an offering that more people could afford. And so they're probably taking way less margins on these, right? They got to sell more units, but they're taking way less margin per unit on these. Um, and I, I don't know. It'd be cool to know from Microtech uh, how well that kind of structures worked. I'm assuming it's working well because uh, I think these sell like hotcakes. Really cool design. So sorry, uh, Ramble, Ramble City, man, um, all over the place. Let's run through what we have here. So stonewash, partial serrate. This is my original one that I had. G10 with the frag handle here. This was an older-ish one from 2023, so just a year, right? So not super old, but a year older. Black polymer here, stonewash full serrated. Um, and this one is from March of 2024. Then we've got a part serrate with uh, apocalyptic finish, black polymer on this one again. 124. So this might be the oldest one out of all of these polymer ones. Then we got a plain edge apocalyptic with black polymer and it is 724. So almost a year old. And then we've got the, the tactical two tone with the, I believe it's Cerakote on the black. I could be wrong. I know they use Cerakote a lot. So I assume that's what it is with the coyote uh, polymer handles right here. And this one is 424. So these are all from 24. This is from 2023. So let's talk about the differences. Um, see now what I thought I was going to see is that this one would be different than the newer ones. Uh, wait, where am I looking at? Um, but it's kind of not. So here is the 2023. You can see it has a flat lock face right there. Whereas this one kind of has a tapered lock face that you can see right there. And if we put them right next to each other, should be locking up relatively the same time. So I thought that they had changed 
their lock face. You can see this one has a tapered lock face, and I mean tapered on the edges here. It's just different, right? It's just a little bit different the way they've done the lock face. Same thing here. So I assume that that was going to be the case across all of them. Same thing here. This one's really tapered. This one almost comes to a point on that one. But then we get to this guy, and it's got a flat lock face too. It's like pretty much the exact same. And yet this one is 724, so it's not even the oldest produced one. So the idea that they change the way they do their lock face on these knives, I guess, doesn't hold water. It's not consistent across all of these. These are quite the same. And then even when we look at the stop pin here, you can see this one is ribbed for my pleasure on both of these. Um, so it's this one. This one isn't. So this one is smooth. Um, and I did hear that it's a little bit random on which one you get. So this is March of 2024, 2023. This is the only one that has the smooth pin on the back here, lock pin on the back. This one is also ribbed right there. So far, that's the only uh, only difference I can tell, at least with the naked eye, right? I can't really, can't really see anything else different with these. Ram lock is the same. Everything else is the same. Those lock faces are, are different, but it, I can't conclusively say, oh, there's a difference. Can't conclusively say it's because of one thing or the other. Uh, so yeah, look, you can see here that on my 2023 G10, it only has a, uh, what, what do you call that? Uh, tool hole. It only has tooling on that side, whereas this side's flat. This one has it on both, I assume because it's not captured maybe, and they ran into issues with Loctiting it and stuff. This one does, yeah, these all have tooling on both sides, except for, I think I already showed that one, except for this 2023. So maybe that's a change they've done recently. Hard to say for sure. Uh, that's about all I can see in terms of differences there. Let's do a let's do a weight. So that's a pretty big difference. Let me make sure this is zeroed out here. Yep, zeroed out. So this is the G10 version, 5.3 ounces, whereas the polymer version, which is lighter, is 4.7 ounces. So this polymer uh, gives you quite a bit of weight reduction, and I'm conflicted on the polymer because I'll be honest. And I mentioned this in my unboxing. I actually really like the look of the polymer. It reminds me of pew pew handles, you know, Glocks, things like that. Um, it's very strong and robust, fiber reinforced. Very cool. And I like how it has kind of an inherent grippy texture all over it without it having to be milled in just due to the casting of the polymer there. I actually really like the look and feel of the polymer. However, G10 is considered more premium, so the part of me, the snobby knife part of me, uh, you know, wants to gravitate towards G10, even though I think, like, aesthetically and use-wise, I think I actually like the polymer better, and it's, it's lighter, too. Now, in terms of, you know, G10 is awesome stuff, and it also isn't affected by, like, heat and cold very much. I would imagine this isn't quite as good of a material in terms of chemical resistance, um, heat and cold, maybe shatter resistance, things like that, but I could be wrong. I mean, there's a reason why this is used in uh, pew pew frames and everything. So if anybody knows structurally, chemically, the difference between the G10 and uh, the polymer here, let me know because I actually really like the polymer. So I don't think I even covered everything I wanted to talk about. So I also wanted to do, wanted to do a little bit of a refresh on this knife. Because uh, I, I reviewed it when it came out originally, or pretty close to when it came out originally. And, you know, I didn't I didn't love the aesthetics. I loved how big it was. Um, it's really cool to see a quote-unquote budget knife. And I use that term in air quotes, even though you can't see, because budget means something different to everybody. To some people, uh, this micro paragon is a budget knife. To some people, this is a grail knife. You know, everybody's different in terms of where they are in their knife journey, what they find acceptable price-wise. But when I say budget, I just mean within the line of Microtech. And also when you're looking at USA-made knives. USA-made budget knives are a dying breed. Uh, so the fact that Microtech was able to do this, and I think uh, Medford is trying to do something similar here uh, with sub $200 USA-made knives, which hopefully will be very, very cool. I, I'd love to see big companies kind of flexing their ability to make offerings like this. It's really awesome. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the fact that it's a large knife and it's a quote unquote budget knife is, 
is very, very cool. A lot of the times, you know, one of the ways you save money on uh, knives is by making them smaller. Less materials, less machining, all that stuff. So having a large knife is very, very cool. Ramlock is awesome, and I like how it's unmodified on this, right? It's not a nerfed down version of the Ramlock. It's the same Ramlock that's on the more expensive versions. So that's very, very cool. Same steel, like I mentioned before. Like, really, everything is the same. That's what makes it so great. I didn't love this giant opening hole. It's a little too... I don't know if futuristic's the right word, but it's, I don't know. It's, it's just, I don't know. I, I didn't love it at first. Um, wasn't my favorite. I do like this nice little belly going on here. Um, I like the edge. It's thin, but it's not, uh, it's not super thin. It's not a, it's not a slicey McSlicerson. It's really a good all around EDC knife, other than the fact that it might be a little too big for a lot of people. Uh, but other than that, uh, <laughs> it's an excellent choice for carrying around, using, beating on. You can buy two of these, especially if you go with the polymer version, for the price of most USA-made standard knives. And if you lose one, break one, or just beat the piss out of it, you've now got two, and you can just swap it out. Or you can just have different ones to carry around. Uh, the weight on these things are outstanding. Uh, they feel great. Ergonomics are really, really nice. Um, you know, I wouldn't give them a 10 out of 10, but... Uh, very good, especially with how angular this thing looks. Uh, really holds in the hand very, very well. And look at all that. I mean, look at all that blade that you have. It is crazy. Like, that is a lot of edge that you get to use there on this thing. Um, tons of handle space for manipulation. Really just a good overall knife. And I don't think I gave it as much credit. Maybe I'll have to go back and watch my video I did on this originally. But I don't know if I gave it enough credit as it deserves. Um, you know, and one of the cool things too, like I mentioned with it being kind of more on the affordable side is you can do things like buy one with a full serrated edge that a lot of people like the look of it and they like the utility of it, but sharpening it is obviously more difficult. Maybe not as difficult as you think, especially if you get the right tools, but it definitely is a little bit more to it. Um, so people will shy away from full serrated blades just cause they're like, you know, they've only got so much money for a knife and it's, you know, are they really going to spend their whole wad on a knife that could be problematic to sharpen but with more affordable knives like this once again in quotes uh it kind of allows you to maybe get something like this because um not only does this look absolutely wicked microtech does some of the coolest serrations in the business in my opinion uh, but in terms of slicing through materials ripping through materials i think the love for serrations has kind of been lost everybody's into plain edge but if you've never cut with a serrated edge it is an absolute pleasure especially if you're doing food prep meat anything like that it just annihilates things but even outside of that it just catches the material and just shreds it apart or if it's thinner material it gets caught in i mean it's basically little mini recurves it gets caught right in there and just slices right through so uh serrated blades are awesome uh, check them out if you haven't in a while. I think a lot of people pass them up and don't even try to use them. This is a good opportunity to pick up a full serrated blade. See if you like it. You know, see if the cutting performance and the ability it provides outweighs the extra effort in terms of maintaining these serrations. You can buy little mini dowels, little mini rods, um, and sharpen these up at home. Touch them up at home. And then, of course, you can always send it into Microtech for a, a real sharpening job. You know, once a year, twice a year, however much you use the thing. But you can touch it up at home with some little rods. Works pretty good. All right. MSI. Very cool knife. Um, I know there was a little bit of controversy on locks failing early on. I think they've got that dialed in. You know, growing pains, things like that. Um, I haven't heard of any other issues. I don't have any issues with any of mine. I've done some light testing. I mean, I haven't gone full ham on any of these. But I've done some light testing no issues for me. So uh, if you are on the fence with the MSI, go check them out. Very, very cool. All right, guys, comment down below. Appreciate you watching. You guys are awesome. Take care.